For a time, Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro was heeding the advice of his aides and suppressing his urge to lash out at journalists. But now the truce with the media has just ended. Earlier this week, Bolsonaro called journalists wimps, saying they would likely die of COVID-19 because, unlike himself, they aren't athletes. Before that, he told a reporter he would like to punch him in the face. The journalist had asked Bolsonaro about several alleged deposits amounting to almost $16,000 reportedly deposited into his wife's bank account by Fabrício de Queiroz, a family friend and former aide now in prison on corruption charges. Queiroz is at the center of a corruption probe involving the president's eldest son, Senator Flavio Bolsonaro, and which is increasingly focusing attention on the president himself. Bolsonaro was elected on an anti-corruption platform, but his narrative that he's different from all other Brazilian politicians and is immune to corruption is not so convincing anymore. His son is being accused of participating in a racket scheme, of hiring employees and keeping a part of their salaries for themselves. Meanwhile, the president is on the campaign trail. In November, there will be municipal elections in Brazil, and the president seems to be preparing the ground for his own re-election in another two years. He's been traveling all over the country, inaugurating plants and visiting the poorest Brazilian states in the north and northeast. Two polls show Bolsonaro's popularity on the rise, even though Brazil has the world's second largest COVID-19 outbreak, and despite criticisms that the president has downplayed the pandemic. You can't blame Bolsonaro for the virus, which is all over the world. I believe Bolsonaro is a good man, and even if he's not, there's nobody else. The previous leftist governments were corrupt. But political analyst Mauricio Santoro says government handouts are playing an important part in Bolsonaro's popularity. In Brazil, since the beginning of the pandemic, we have an emergency aid that it's more or less 60% of the minimum wage, and it's reaching almost half of the country, so it's really big. What will happen when the money runs out by the end of the year remains to be seen. Monica Yanakiev, Al Jazeera, Rio de Janeiro.